Is it possible that Jed York has and and Parag Marath are beginning to sour on Kyle Shanahan? Okay, it's a question. I want. I don't know, but what I know is Jed York can take a lot of things. He'll withstand a lot of things, but getting blown out at home isn't one of them. Now, God forbid there have been fans in the stands. Oh, my God. Shanahan might have been fired already. Getting blown out at home is never acceptable to Jed York. He's very finicky about that. Also, losing on national television to a team you should beat, also unacceptable. And Shanahan and uh, Jed and Parag have a, a history of turning on their coaches quick. As soon as things look bleak, the coach is thrown under the bus and they act like, look, that guy didn't live up to our standards. We're a winning organization. He's a fraud coach. So I don't know if they feel that way about Kyle yet. But what I do know is that Kyle has a lot of splaining to do. As Ricky Ricardo would say, he got a lot of splaining to do. Like last week, for example. Two players in particular were injured during practice and limited participants throughout the week. Akello Witherspoon, Jimmy Garoppolo, okay? Injured, limited, questionable for the game. Game time decisions. Shanahan had three days to observe each of them and did very closely. I got to look at Akello. I got to look at Jimmy. I'm looking at Akello. I'm looking at Jimmy. And after looking at both those guys for three days of practice, Shanahan determined that Jimmy was healthy enough to play and Akello was not. Now, what we learned during the game is that Shanahan's determinations were wrong in both cases. In fact, Akello was healthy enough to play. When he got in the game, he played well enough. And Jimmy Garoppolo evidently was not healthy enough to play. I mean, by the second quarter, he was completely skittish in the pocket and favoring his back ankle. Uh, not early, but sec in the second quarter, he absolutely did. So the two biggest decision decisions Shanahan had to make last week, he made both of them wrong. And from the head coaches, from the from the owner's perspective, Kyle, that's your job. We're not paying you to draw up plays and to draw up a game plan. That's what the coordinators do. You have coordinators. Mike McDaniel, Mike LaFleur, run game coordinator, pass game coordinator. We're paying you to be a head coach, and not just a little. They gave him an extension this year. He's one of the highest paid head coaches in the league. I think he's making $10 million a year. You can't even accurately assess which players are healthy enough to play on Sunday. What's that? Are you paying attention? That's what I would have to ask. I wouldn't be surprised if Jed and Parag had a sit-down meeting with Kyle after that game. 43 to 17, and, and you didn't know you lost 43 to 17, primarily because you thought Akella Witherspoon wasn't ready to play. And you were wrong. You also thought your quarterback was ready to play and he wasn't. You were wrong. How could you have handled that any worse? Now, what recourse does Jed and Parag have if they are souring on Kyle? Nothing. Contracts are guaranteed. This guy's getting $60 million in the next few years one way or another. But I, I would have to say you have to look at Kyle a little differently after what's happened now. I mean, first of all, he passed on Patrick freaking Mahomes. That's the original sin, okay? They wouldn't be in this position with Jimmy right now if Kyle had just taken 15 minutes to watch some Patrick Mahomes film and maybe work him out too. Instead, he was like, I'm going to save 15 minutes of my day because I believe in Kirk Cousins and we're going to get Kirk Cousins. That was the original sin. Now, after giving the guy an extension that – Jed and Parag were philosophically opposed to with Harbaugh. Harbaugh got to the Super Bowl, asked for an extension, and Jed and Parag said, no, we don't re reward failures. We only hang NFC championship banners. And you know what? I get that because they not, now they reward failure, and look what they get, a losing season. Well, that's what it looks like. So what's, let's say the Niners go 7-9 and nine this year, and it just so happens you're paying top dollar for a head coach who's had one winning season in three years. Then imagine what's at stake in 2021. They have to have a winning season in 2021. What if they go 6-10 and 10 in 2021? Then you've had one winning season in five years. How can you keep paying that guy $10 million a year if he doesn't win? So to me, from Jed and Parag's perspective, 
things got real, real, real serious with, with Kyle right now. They're paying him too much for him to have a tank year. I don't care who's hurt. Your quarterback is on the field. Work it out. It'd be very discouraging to see Kyle Shanahan lose like that and then go to his post-game press conference and then just sit there like this. Well, you know, you know, we've got to do better on third down. We're not going to be able to run the ball on first down if we don't – we're not going to be able to run the ball on, on 30 times a game if we don't, uh, you know, do better on third down. We've got to execute. You know, it's, you know we, we did pretty good week one, but then week two we didn't get – it's like, dude, take the hat off, sit up, and project. Stop speaking through your nose. Stop mumbling. I feel like he needs like his dad to yell at him. Sit up. Stop mumbling. Project confidence. Be a man. Sit up. Take the hat off. Stop mumbling. Show some charisma. Project confidence. Be a leader. Well, you know, I don't really think that's fair to say. I feel like Michael Lynch, he's really having a good season, but, you know, it's just a couple of plays that stand out. No! No one's having a good season. Don't fight back on criticism. Don't push back. Just say, we're not playing well enough. It starts with me. We're two and three. This is way below our standard. Sit up in your chair. Speak with some bass in your voice. Stop talking through your nose. All of this stuff matters. You're not a coordinator anymore. You're the face of the franchise. Project a good face. Not the 17-year-old not slumped over in his chair with, that, with the hat on. No, no, no. You know, we show the best we can. No, dude, you're not a Super Bowl champion. You don't get that type of credit. What you are is two and three. That's what you are. That's how you get talked to. Sit up. 